Brutal Viking Raids, A.D. 750 to 1150 The Beginning of the Raids The period of the Vikings is thought to have begun after the reign of Germanic warlords and barbarians in Europe, and about 200 to 300 years after the fall of the Roman Empire. The world had vastly changed at this point after thousands of years of Roman rule. From around the year 793, bands of warriors began to make their way south, striking out from their native lands of what is today known as Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and the surrounding territories. Following the period commonly referred to as the Germanic Iron Age, people from the Nordic countries, known as Norsemen, made use of rivers around Europe to facilitate travel, trade, raids, and conquest. It was the latter of these activities that they would become most noted for. Much of what is known about the Viking Age is based on what was written down during this period, and long after it as well by ancient historians and experts on ancient cultures. What we learn from these records depends on who wrote down the tales of these people. If you only read the Viking records they wrote themselves, you'll get a one-sided view, as is the case if you just consult the records of the people they attacked and raided. Everyone has a different view of events. It's only through a holistic view of events that the truth about this age can be properly realized. The Vikings were not one unified group of people. Although the all-inclusive term, Viking Magnet, seems to categorize them all into a single ethical or racial group. The truth is that they were a group made up of a myriad of smaller ethnic groups from various Scandinavian countries, such as Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and other surrounding regions. Vikings did not only come from Scandinavia, however. There are historical records of many other kinds of Vikings, such as the people from Finland, Estonia and Lapland, along with the Kola Peninsula of Russia. Let's look at where these various groups went when they left their homeland in all these territories. Bear in mind that these regions were not called by their modern names until very much later on. The Danes struck out from Denmark and immediately traveled west along the North Sea to the coast of France. They landed in Spain and made sorties into the Mediterranean and even raided a small territory in Italy called Luna, thinking that this was the seat of the Roman Empire. The Swedes sailed up towards the Baltic Sea and established the Kevian Russian state and also to the territory of the Byzantian Empire and beyond in the Orient itself. The Norwegians sailed west towards British territory the Scottish regions and Ireland. Dublin itself was set up as a base for slave trading in 841. Overall, these men and women spread across much of the known world, taking whatever they wished whenever they needed it. Apart from trade, these groups of people had little to do with each other and certainly did not present a united front. In fact, they often fought each other over scarce land, spoils, and resources. However, the Vikings were united in the eyes of the people they attacked and conquered. They were a universally feared group. They had learned the art of shipbuilding and sailmaking by observing what the Romans did during the time of their empire many years before. Celtic and Germanic merchants interacted with the Romans in and around 300 to 400 AD and studied their technology, Mark 2018. It was this influence of the Romans which led the Vikings to try and grow their own navy many years later. From modern-day excavations, it's clear that the Vikings and their ancestors had held an interest in sea-related technology for a very long time. Their ancestral activities can be traced back many thousands of years before the Vikings even came to be. And this can be proven by examining the evidence of rock carvings from about 4000 to 2000 BC. It is worth noting that trade between the European mainland and the Germanic or barbarian traders had been taking place since Roman times. 
Viking furs, whetstones, and other resources had always been passing between the two groups. This, of course, led the would-be raiders to the European shores and the promise of new and fertile land for them. They saw the land they came into contact with as being ripe with opportunity for the establishment of a new civilization. Further Expansion In 791 AD, small raids on British monasteries began because these were often solitary and unprotected. In addition to this, these monasteries often contained a large amount of money or gold. One of the most significant of these raids was in 793 in a place called Lindisfarne. The monastery at Lindisfarne was considered to be the center of Christianity in the region of Northumbria. It was not, however, the first raid on British territories in the British Isles. In 787, three Viking warships appeared off the coast of Wessex, traveling down from a place called Hortholland in what is known as modern-day Norway today. The men on the coast of Wessex who were there at the time had expected that these ships would be willing to engage in friendly trade, but they were sorely mistaken. Further attacks occurred at the monastery of Iona in Scotland, Jarrow in Northumbria, and at various locations off the coast of Ireland in the 790s. The Vikings left no one that they encountered alive. Their objective was to gain as much loot as they could and get back to their ships. They often burned the buildings they encountered, which included the churches they came into contact with. This is documented in the account of a raid at Lindisfarne. Many other churches along the British coastline suffered the same fate. Such was the pattern of the Viking attacks during the early years of their reign of terror. Europe resists. The attacks didn't stop in the 9th century. In 840, the Vikings raided territories in Ireland and established the slave colony of Dublin. During this time, they set up camps in this region and began to establish a presence in the area. Paris, in France, was attacked by the Danes in 845 and sacked. It was attacked by them again in 860. In 844, the Vikings had relocated as far south as the Spanish coastline, where they came into contact with Muslims currently living there. Sailing up the river Guadalquivir towards Seville, they were attacked by Islamic troops there and forced backwards. After this reverse, Viking raids on the Spanish territories were few and far between. In 866, Vikings raided the north of England and established the Kingdom of York. Unusually, though, the two kings of that region, Ayel and Osbert, were not harmed or captured. In 872, Harald Harfagre became the first king of Norway according to Viking literature. He would rule until around 930 and is considered to be the king responsible for the unification of Norwegian tribes after the great battle of Harsfjord. Following the traumatic earlier raids on their country and the overwhelming number of invaders running riot across their land, the English forces attempted to fight back at the Battle of Eddington in 878 and formulated what was known as the Dane Law in Northern England. This was an agreement allowing the Vikings to settle on various parts of English soil where their customs took precedence over English statutes in those regions. Even in spite of their limited successes, the British Isles experienced tremendous hardship at the hands of the Vikings and never gained true authority during these times. The Vikings eventually settled on foreign soil and established themselves there. However, more attacks from the invaders were still forthcoming. In the year 900, the Vikings had moved as far east as they would eventually reach. On the way, they began to raid Mediterranean territories and came into conflict with the Byzantine army and navy. Under the leadership of Olaf the Wise, they reached as far as Istanbul where after, having been paid a substantial sum of money, they decided to turn around and leave again. Paris had been besieged in the 9th century. It was attacked again in 911. 
Under the leadership of Viking chief Rollo, they managed to forcibly gain territory in France. The descendants of Chief Rollo became the formidable force later known as the Normans. These warriors would play a huge role in shaping the outcome of English and British culture for centuries to come, although they didn't know it yet. In 910, the Vikings were defeated at the Battle of Teton Hall and Wedfield by the forces of Mercia and Wessex. In 915 and 918, the Viking king Reginald defeated the Scots on the River Tyne. It was during these years that the Vikings began to move away from the expansionist mindset and more towards a way of life that favored establishment of a culture and civilized life. In the 11th century, around the year 1000, the Vikings strengthened their grip on mainland Europe, British Isles, and made inroads into the Americas and the New World for the first time. At this time, the British tried to sue for peace with their oppressors, but they only ended up making a bad situation worse. This led to the massacre of many innocent people when they engaged in ethnic cleansing against the local population who had settled on the coast after the arrival of the Vikings. In 981, Eric the Red had discovered the New World after being expelled from Norway and settling in Greenland for a number of years. Within about 20 years of his landing there, about 3,000 people of Norse descent now lived in this new world. They were mainly peaceful farmers and shepherds. <laughs>